So, welcome guys. What's up? My name is Phil, and uh, on the phone I got my buddy Zach here. And uh, I'm going to be playing Halo 5, or attempting to play Halo 5. I haven't played Halo in way too long. and uh, But I'm going to be playing Halo 5. And um, Zach's going to be asking me some questions, and then uh, we're going to be having a conversation together. And uh, it's going to be good. Uh, at any point, uh, if you want to add, if you want to add something, or if you want to ask some questions, go ahead. You can put definitely put that in the chat, and, my, and Zach's gonna be there, and uh, it's um, yeah, he's gonna be able to see it, and then we'll be able to answer them as as best as we can. Um, other than that, uh, topic for today is leadership. So we got tons of questions and uh, tons of things uh, lined up. And uh, I think it's a conversation. Last week we had, um, um, we were talking about authentic friendships and that was a good one. We had a lot of people join. And uh, by the way, if you go to my YouTube channel, I'm gonna put a link somewhere in my account here. But if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, it's not there yet, but I will put it. Um, I'm actually gonna be uploading all of the conversations there and all the videos there so you can see us playing and I'll edit it and all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be um, real, uh, real good there. So it's gonna be fun. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be good. Um, so because the videos on here only last, I think, 14 days. So if there's something that you really liked and you want to share with somebody or you think someone would benefit from the conversation, feel free to share the video and to send it to them. Um, other than that, I think that's all I've got. I see here my buddy Matt is watching. What's up, Matt? And uh, oh, Nikki, Nikki has arrived. What's up? Yes, Nikki's here going on Nikki um, uh, hold on here how can I yeah, oh, okay perfect yeah awesome um, yeah so Zach uh, I think that's all I've got so take it away and uh, let's see if I can do anything good with this <laughs> this game we're playing Halo 5 for you guys that just trying to see this now six people that uh, joined there if you're just watching work, I'm going to be attempting to play Halo 5 while Zach's going to be, uh, you know, talking there and asking me some questions and stuff. And today we're talking about leadership. So it's going to be good. All right, Zach, take it away, my friend. Awesome. Oh, awesome. oh wait, hold on, actually, before you do that. Uh, if, if for whatever reason the game's actually um, too loud or the volume needs to be changed, just let me know. And I'll uh, I'll do the necessary changes there as, as need be. So, but actually, I need to bring up the volume on my TV a little bit. Right. Right. Perfect. All right, Zachy, take it away, my friend. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Uh, so we're going to first just start by defining leadership. Again, uh, I went to Webster's definition, uh, and it's very vague again. Uh, it goes over the office or position to lead, which is kind of your typical form of leadership, how we see it. Um, publicly in our society. You have the act or insistence to lead, which is a very tyrannical uh, focus on leadership. And then you have the uh, skill or capacity to lead, which uh, we believe is in everybody. Um, but leadership is way more than that. Uh, and we Hold on, Zach. Conversation by, by me asking you, Phil, what do you think leadership All right. Okay. Hold on, guys. I'm turn down the volume a little bit. And oh, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's try that. All right. Go ahead, Zach. Sorry. So, what was the question? Uh, we have the vague definition of leadership, but yep. obviously there's a lot more to leadership than just an officer position Absolutely. or an insistent or act um, demanding to be seen as a leader or even just the skill. Mm -hmm. So in a very general sense, 
what is leadership to you? Well, you know, I've always, you know, I mean, you can, you can, like, I've read a lot of books by, you know, John Maxwell and a lot of those guys and uh, Max Lucado and, and, uh, you know, and, and one of the biggest definitions, I think, of leadership that I've heard, and which is a good one to an extent, is influence. Leadership, at the end of the day, is influence. Leadership is the ability to have people follow you. Um, you know, you have a say in people's life. So, and, um, and um, but more than that, my personal definition that I like, the very thing that I like to say that leadership is, is leadership is reproduction. I'm a strong believer that leadership is, is reproduction. Leadership is reproducing who you are. Um, and, you know, the thing with that, though, is that, you know, in leadership, you can reproduce the good, the bad, and the ugly, not just the good. Um, That's good. And, uh, and I think sometimes we can focus on, well, you know, if you're a good leader, you'll rep reproduce good stuff. Well, no, not, just not necessarily. That, that can go both. You're, you know, leadership is reproduction, whether good or bad. You'll reproduce the good, but you'll also reproduce the bad. So it's, it's, it's almost an incentive for us to make sure that we have the right motives, the right, um, like, you know what I mean? Like that we're doing it in the proper way. Because, and that as leaders, that we're constantly growing, because if not, then guess what? We'll reproduce the bad. Um, and I think, you know, for this definition, I think more than just explaining what leadership is, I think it's also, in order to truly understand what is, we need to have a clear explanation of what leadership is not. And, you know, leadership is not, there's a huge difference between positional leadership and, um, and uh, uh, you know, relational leadership. Um, and unfortunately, we live in a world. Oh, I'm all, ah! Sorry, this guy has a the infinity sword. He almost killed me. Um, you know, but uh, we live in a world where we lean a lot more on positional leadership than we do on relational leadership. And when you're, when you're talking about millennials, especially, and leaders, uh, millennials will very, very seldom respond to positional leadership. Actually, I just read a book uh, about a month ago. It's called um, White Paper on Millennials. And um, it is uh, um, it is by Benjamin Windle and Frank Damasio. Phenomenal book. It's a short book. It's like 60 or 80 pages or something. Very small thing. Um, but um, it's, it's a phenomenal book. Anyways, and one thing he asked in there, because he talked about that very thing, positional leadership versus relational leadership. And he says, you know, every leader, you know, need to ask themselves one question. You know, would people still follow you if they didn't have to? Would, would, still, would people still listen to you and still obey you and still follow you if you didn't have the uh, position? Um, and... Uh, you know, and really made me think, you know, because how many of us lean on, uh, you know, our positional leadership where it's like, well, you know, people, so basically what he was trying to at, what he was trying to get at is this is, you know, are people just following you because they have to or are people following you because they truly believe in you as a person they believe in you as a leader and that you've literally you've earned their followship, if that is even a word. Um, and Hmm? Fellowship. No, follow ship. Okay. Like, like, you know, did you did you earn, you know, for them to follow you or not, right? Okay, I have no, sorry, I need to think for a second. I have no idea where I'm going in this game. I, okay. How do I know? Hold on. There's a way to, is it? No, that's not it. Ah, there. Okay, sorry. I need, I, I figured out what button it was. Uh, tell me where I need to go. Um, oh, there you go. Um, anyways, and uh, and that was extremely interesting because I was like, hey, you know, if I didn't have the position that I have, and, and I think one thing that he really stresses and I really like is the fact that he, you know, he he's really pushing more of, you know, it's not just about, um, it's not just about position. And I think some, I think, you know, like my parents' generation, 
um, which would be the Gen X generation, which is pre-millennial generation. Um, they've relied a lot, and even prior to that, they've relied a lot on positional leadership, where you've got you've got a position, and therefore you got to be obeyed. But I think if all you do is rely on the position, you miss so much because position, just because you have a position, doesn't necessarily mean you'll treat people right. You know what I mean? Just because you have a position doesn't mean that, um, you know, that, that people will want to follow you or want, willingly want to follow you, but they'll do it because they have to. Or they'll do it because, let's get this cinematic, oh yes I can. Um, but they'll do it because, um, yeah, they'll get fired if they don't, you know? Um, but it's, it's, it's got to be so much more than that. Um, it's got to be so much more than that. Because when you really break down leadership, leadership is not just about position. Leadership is not just about telling people what to do. And I think a lot of times, you know, people can get to the point where they're just telling people what to do. And it's like, that's not being a leader. You know, leaders not having a microphone. Leaders not having, um, you know, power. Leaders about willing to do what's right at whatever cost and it's about making other people's lives better at your expense not making your life better at other people's expense and i think this is where a lot of people will get wrong with leadership is you know it's like hey how can you serve me? i'm your boss you know how can you serve me when when you know and, and you know and obviously you know i'm i'm a pastor and and you know zach's a christian and and uh you know so obviously we're gonna put some some christian bias twists on things so to speak um where you know because that's you know that's our worldview and that's where we kind of come from but uh, the reality is this for example jesus take jesus uh, for example like one of the best leaders the best leader that has ever um you know lived the bottom line is this you know he clearly stated himself i came not to serve uh, sorry, I came not to be served, but I came to serve. Jesus, God, man, the very one that could have had the right to demand people to serve him, was the very one that said, no, how can I serve you? And I think that is best represented even when what he did at the Last Supper, right? He, he, he um, you know, he washed the, um, he washed the, uh, the disciples' feet. And, um, you know, back in that day, you know, there would be a... Um, sorry, I'm just watching. Some people are writing some good things here. Um, you know, but... Um, you know, back in that day, people had servants that would come and wash people's feet. Uh, because it wasn't just a nice act. Hey, I love you. I'm going to wash your feet. It was cultural. You know, because back then they had, you know, sandals and, and you know, there was all sorts of... You know, camel poop and all sorts of crap and dust and whatever on the ground and so um you know so people's feet would get muddy and dirty and disgusting and smelly so most people had servants in their house to wash people's feet so that you know they would be clean whatever you know moving forward and being in the house now the thing is you know when you look at the last supper there was no servants there because it was it was just the disciples and Jesus. But what's interesting is that the disciples should have been the one that should have taken the place of the servant and said, hey, I'm gonna wash everybody's feet, whatever, everybody take turn and you know this and that, and especially Jesus' feet, the master's feet. But you read the story in Jesus, and, and I love this phrase, I, I'm, I'm gonna butcher it because I don't know that, I need to pause this for a second. Um, you know, I'm gonna butcher it because I know that I, I forget the exact um, verse, but um, you know, it, it goes, and depending on what version you read, but it goes along these lines where it actually says, you know, and fully knowing or fully being aware of where he came from, he grabbed the towel, knelt down, and began to wash the disciples' feet. And so, fully being aware of his identity, who he was, knowing he was man, but no fully God, he still stooped down and knowing that he was the master, knowing that he is God. He's about to go die on the cross for us. And he literally stoops down at the level of a servant and begins to watch. You know, the king, the master is serving the servant's feet. And Jesus is making a point. 
I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. See, the very one that should have been served was the very first one that came to serve. You know, again, to keep going on on, on you know, what is leadership? I mean, gosh, I could I could go on all day on what leadership is because that leadership is not just one thing. Like I said, leadership is reproduction. Leadership is influence. Leadership is, um, well, that was cool. Uh, leadership is, uh, you know, leadership is, is, is being willing to have a target on your back. You know, leadership is being willing to be the first one there and the last one to leave. Leadership is to be willing to be blamed for things that you never did. Um, taking responsibility for things that, that you didn't do. Um, leadership is, um, gosh, like leadership is so many things. You know, leadership is is being, wi being willing to be criticized for things that an average person, quote unquote, without any leadership, uh, you know, position would never be blamed for or never be questioned about. Like leadership is just, it's so multifaceted. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, like, does that make sense? It's just, it's so many things. Man, where the hell is this guy coming from? Get out of here. Where's that gun? Yeah. Okay, there. Um, yeah, I think you're absolutely right in the aspect that leadership is, it's just more than just a basic definition. Oh, absolutely. It's not um, just like, hey, whole this is it. it is to be lived yeah. out. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, for me, if I'm the one to like simplify what leadership, and when we say leadership, we kind of always assume good leadership it should be the definition. Um, well, yeah, but no. <laughs> Not in reality, I mean, but if we're, go we're going to talk about leadership, we're talking about optimal, at the very least. Yeah, because um, I mean, because I mean, like for example, like you know, let's just just talk about this for a second, right? Like for example, Hitler was a phenomenal leader. He was a horrible person, with horrible morals, with horrible everything. But the reality is, the reason why he was able to get so far and get so much done is because. People followed him. And here's the thing, you know, basic definition of leadership. Leadership is this. A leader has followers. If you don't have followers, guess what? You're not a leader. A le if, if you claim to be a leader, but you turn around and there's no one following, guess what? You're not a leader. You're just taking a, you're just taking a walk in the park by yourself, you know? But the reality is, you look at Hitler, you know, I don't care what you say. Hitler was a phenomenal leader. He was a horrible, again, a horrible person, did brutal things was I don't condone anything if if anything like he's probably one of the worst persons that has ever lived but the reason why he was able to get so much accomplished and so much done is because he understood you know what it you know what it took to get people going now he did it the wrong way it's like for example you know we all need motivation in our lives now fear is one of the best you know is one of the greatest motivators as far as, you know, to motivate people to do things or not do things. You know, the reason why I'm not jumping off, uh, 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 you know, jumping out of a plane, uh, you know, is, is because of fear. Um, you know, it's holding me back from doing things. But the reality is, it's a horrible motivator. It's effective, but it's, it's a horrible way to live. You know, in the same way, uh, you know, so I guess let me rephrase this. Hitler wasn't a good leader. He was an effective leader. But he was a horrible yeah. leader. I guess that's a better way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, yeah. I'm on a bullet. Um, I think optimal leadership is more than just showing up with a fresh or I understand it in my head. Is um, oh. when you're, you make the most when given the least. Yeah, uh, being resourceful for sure. Resourceful. And like that, not just with Reeves, that's such a small aspect. Being a leader means that, like you said, you have followers, which means you have to be good with people. And oh, so yes. often we, with typical leadership, it's, um, it's so broken because you don't have leaders, you have bosses. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Where... It, they're thriving because they're either uh, assume control of everything, so they're just doing everything and they're getting wiped and 
and uh, being horrible to be around. Or they're thriving because they're awful at being a leader and even a boss, perhaps, but they have a great team and they take all the credit. Oh, um, that's a good but one, yeah. being a good leader means even if you're given some of the worst um, uh, team, you're still able to bring out the most of them that they become the best teams. The best coaches aren't the people who have initially the best teams. The best coaches are the ones who know what, how those uh, individual players need to be developed into becoming a that's championship well, team. That's well said. And the same yeah. thing goes into businesses, the same goes into discipleship, um, whether that's uh, just simple mentorship at work mm -hmm. or at church or through life. Um, so yeah, optimal leadership is when you know and have the discernment on how to make the most and bring the most out of being given the least. Take the Go mobile, Spartan. Right away. Yeah. So where are we at? Yeah, that's well said. And again, you know, leadership. Like this is again, this is so not just a one faceted answer. Like, hey, this is the answer. It's, gosh, it's so much more complicated. And wow, and I cannot drive a car in a video game. I can drive a car in real life, but apparently not in a video game. Oh my gosh, I'm dying. Okay. Um, you know, um. Yeah, it's 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 really hard to just kind of pinpoint, you know, like, hey, this is leadership. But it's like, I can explain what, you know, what leadership does, what is involved in leadership, but it's not always easy to just say, boom, this is leadership, right? Because even as I was saying that, like I was thinking about another thing that leadership is, you know, leadership is, is, um, Oh shoot, you were saying something and I was going to piggyback off of it and I forget what you said. I think that's great though, because leadership oh, yeah, I remember. isn't one thing. And I think that's great because that means everyone is capable of doing it. Because you should be able to um, develop a following or a team that mm -hmm. piggybacks off of your weaknesses. Yeah. And I so think you don't need to be a one trick pony or. Uh, someone who has all the skills yeah. because you're developing a team to meet where you lack. Yes. Yeah. That, that's the thing. You know. Um, yeah. So that's what I was gonna. Um, that's what I was gonna say, and I just remembered. You know, a, a good leader is a team player. A good leader. You know, especially nowadays. You know. You know, like I was talking about millennials earlier. I'm a millennial, born in '86, and. And, uh, you know, and someone else was, I think Nikki in the chat there was, was mentioning Gen Z's as well. You know, the reality is, is that we've, we've kind of given up on the whole positional thing. We don't really believe in positional leadership anymore. It's like, I don't care if you're the boss. I don't care if you're, you know, because we've grown up our whole lives. We're the generation that have grown up our whole lives. Like, don't do that. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> you know, and like, we're just, so we don't want to just, you know, we, we got that from home. You know, we got that from home and now we're getting it at work too. It's like, no, 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 I'm not just going to follow you because you say so. Give me a stinking reason to, you know. And a good leader is, is, is a one that knows how to, you know, again, build people up. A good leader is one that knows how to not just take credit, you know, not take credit for things he didn't do and gladly gives credit to others for things that he did. Um, you know, and, and I think some of the best leaders are, are, are people that learn to value those that are around them that learn to, again, that, you know, they make those around them better. Uh, and, and they're more focused on that than, and, and they're more focused on what can I do for you more than, you know, hey, here's what I want you to do for me. Um, and that will gain, you know, especially with Gen Z and, and millennials, where it will really um, gain a lot of, you'll gain a lot of ground with those generation by doing that. By actually, you know, equipping people and by really, um, um, what's the word? Empowering people. You know, great leaders empowers others. We can do that. Um, yeah. And uh, and I think that's one thing that's missing today. You know, in, in in companies, that's one thing that's missing in in a lot of places, in a lot of workplaces, and a lot of of organizations. Um, you know, because we're all about.
you know, how can you make me better? And and how can I? Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, this this ATV has two rockets in the front. That's pretty interesting. Um, but anyways, yeah. So we, you know, we got to get to the point where it's like, okay, how can I? Again, I mean, bottom line, I think if, if I could sum up leadership in one word, it'd be this. Servanthood. Serving. Um, and I think we've... Because we've, I think even the word leading has been so skewed over the years that it's like, you know, I'm leading. I'm in charge. I'm in power. Um, I make the decisions. Um, but then along with that comes, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I'm important. I'm a leader. I'm famous. I'm a leader. And I think we're living in such a, you know, fame poised and uh, fame um, toxic world. That it's all about, you know, how famous are you? You know, I made a name for myself and this and that. Blah, blah, blah. Jesus literally went around making someone else's name famous. His whole um, you know, his whole life was about, you know, to glorify the Father. That's literally what he did. He went around glorifying the Father, not himself. And, uh, you know, and, and I think that that's a great example for us as well. That, hey, um, we're not here to make ourselves famous, but we're here to make Jesus famous. We're not here to make ourselves look good and, and whatever. Because we're really not that good, let's face it. <laughs> um, well, maybe you are, Zach, but I am. No, I'm not. Um, you know, and so, hey, why don't we just, you know, cut the crap and... Stop trying to act like we're that important. Stop trying to act like we're that good at life and at things. And why, why don't we just make it for what it is? And, you know, really, what is this guy doing? I'm sitting backwards on my thing. What is this? Um, you know, but yeah, I think uh, I'm kind of rambling on and on here. But it's, oh, it's again, leadership. You can't just define leadership. But, um, you know. I, I know a good leader when I see one. Um, you know, my my boss is one of the greatest leaders. Um, you know, at work, my boss is one of the greatest leaders I've ever met in my life. He's one of the most hardworking people that deserves so much. Yet, he's one of the guys that you know seeks for recognition the least amount I've ever seen. And he's the guy that will work for you more than anyone I've ever seen. He's the hardest working guy. But the thing about him is that he's always hard at work blessing other people and helping other people and making sure that other people are equipped and have what they need to move forward and to do their work and to be effective and to shine. He's the type of guy that will, like, he'll work his butt off to make sure that I get recognized for stuff, even though that I might not even always be the one that actually deserves the recognition. Like, he's one of the most selfless yet hardworking people I know. And what are these lasers, man? They're just eating me alive. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think but, that's a good point because great leaders produce great leaders. That is very true. Again, going back to leadership is reproduction, right? So you'll re good leaders will reproduce good leaders and bad leaders will reproduce bad, reproduce bad leaders. That's just yeah. the bottom line. Um, and yeah, one thing I wanted to touch on what you were saying was just like... Typical leadership, um, for those of you who don't know, which will be almost all of you, I'm actually, uh, I'm in college right now for human resources, which Your is mom goes a lot to college. of it, is uh, hiring, firing, and development of uh, the human resource within companies. Um, and a, the unfortunate reality, um, I love uh, Simon Sinek. Uh, Sinek. He's one of my favorite. Oh, he's phenomenal. Um, I love him too communicators when it comes to not just uh, leadership but human development oh yeah he's um, awesome have you read have you read any books by him or you just watched some videos I haven't yet. bro um, leaders eat last no no sorry sorry start with why and leaders eat last are two of the best books I've ever read in my life and he yeah. um, like he basically talks about like leadership but he talks about uh, more on the, the, the business side of things, more on the corporate side of things. Um, you know, why, like why some companies thrive and why others don't. And one of the big things in there is about leadership. And he talks about, you know, people treating the employees properly and this and that, where it's not just kind of a tyrannical kind of I'm the boss 
shut up and do what I say, but it's like there's camaraderie, there's fellowship, there's community yeah. built within these companies and stuff like that, which are all great aspects of leadership. But anyways, yeah, if you ever get a chance, man, read those two books. Start with why and leadership. Uh, sorry, leaders eat last. Phenomenal yeah. books. Um, yes, that's good. Um, but he, the way that he explains it, and it's one hundred percent true, is we have a very toxic and unhealthy uh, way of promoting people who just do the job well, not people who are good with people. Um, well. We just hire and promote the best performers. But leadership is more than performing. You can have a moderate to okay performer and have them be an infinitely better um, leader because of a lack of toxicity. Mm -hmm. Because it's not, I can do your job better than you, it's I know how to communicate what you need so that you can be better. Where you're currently at, and that's about leadership. Leadership isn't telling um, whoever our followers are um, what they they need. Um, it's about helping them develop what they need. That's good. Uh, like even in psychology, uh, uh, I've already done schooling for uh, basic counseling, interviewing. Uh, Blah 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 blah. I have a little diploma on uh, on basic counseling, and one of the things that they first teach you is that when you are counseling someone, you do not tell them what their problem is, and that infuriates me. Even though I know 100% it's true, you don't tell people what their problem is. You ask them questions on what they want, so that they can realize problem is and so that they can realize how they need to go about fixing it that's good um, it's so easy when we can see what we believe the problem is and we try to make them adapt a style change where they're not ready to admit that that's the, indeed the problem yeah that's good no, you're right you know, and, and going back to what you were just saying there a moment ago, you know, as, as a leader myself and as a leader that, you know, raises other people up to leadership positions um, and helps, you know, develop others into leadership, I, w I, would, I would take someone that knows nothing but that is teachable any day over someone that, that, you know, knows more and that might be trained or whatever but is not willing to, you know, change or learn anything new. I'll, I'll take, you know... I will take a, a yeah, I, 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 would, I would take a person that is willing to learn and that's like, yes, sir, you know, I'll, you know, I, it's not just about getting people that are just, that know how to fall in line and know their place and, and just kind of yes men type of people, but, uh -huh. you know, I'd rather, I'd rather people any day that are like, you know what, I'm here to serve, what do you need? You know, I'm here to serve, what do you need? Why? Because that's how I operate as well. And, and man, guess what? If you have an organization or a company that everyone has the attitude, hey, I'm here to serve. I'm not just here for a paycheck. I'm not just here because I have to, because if I don't, I'm not gonna get paid or whatever. But guess what? If we have an organization where everybody's willing to pull, you know, to pull their weight and say, hey man, I'm here, uh, you know, man, that organization will be absolutely unstoppable. And I guess, you know, part of it, just to the leader, but also comes down to is, you know, does the organization have a mission worth following? Does the mission, does the, the organization have a, um, you know, a, a, um, a vision that is worth dying for, that is worth living for, that is worth, you know, actually, mm -hmm. you know, being that for it? And what the heck am I doing? For sure. Uh, but yeah. Yes, sir. Now that we've talked about it a little bit, let's uh, go on to one of the more in-depth questions. I'm doing horrible. Whoa, that was cool. Um, we've lightly talked about it, but let's talk about leadership focus for a moment. Um, you have the typical leadership, which are usually people who are just given the position. Uh, unfortunately, usually because they have 
a great performance as someone who used to be a team player mm -hmm. um, and aren't taught how to have a how to be a good effective leader. So usually um, the other focus, which is tyrannical, mm -hmm. um, which is purely self-focused, um, but if they're given position and they're trained properly, yeah. they can also become the last uh, focus that we're going to talk about, which is uh, a servant focus, mm -hmm. which is about the benefit of overall, not just a self-benefit, but a mutual and overall benefit. Um, so between the typical tyrannical and servant focuses, what what are your thoughts on on, on um, our focus as leaders? Um, sorry, repeat the question again. Repeat that again. So just going over the class, classification yeah. of um, typical leadership focus, a tyrannical leadership focus, or servant leadership focus. Um, what are your thoughts on on how we engage our focus? Um, well, tyrannical leadership is bad. I'll say that mm -hmm. <laughs> right off the bat. Um, yeah. but, I mean, if I can go about answering a question with comparing the two, the reality is, is one is selfish and one is selfless. Um, one wants to make the organization better. One woman, one wants to make themselves better. Um, you know, one might want to, you know, make themselves look good and equip themselves again, like I said earlier, um, you know, help uh, making yourself better at other people's expense rather than making other people better at your own expense as a leader, which should be what you do. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I would say the biggest difference between the two is that one is, one is selfish and, and, uh, you know, one is, one is selfless. That's the biggest difference between the two, I think. Um, so obviously I do not want to do anything with the tyrannical, you know, style of it. Um, because, you know, tyrannical style is follow me because I said so. Follow me because I'm the boss and I won't pay you if you don't. Um. But, you know, what if you lose your position? You know, would people still follow you? Going back to what I was saying earlier about that book yeah. from uh, Benjamin Wendell, right? The, the, the white paper on, on millennials. Um, millennials and leadership is, you know, if, if you lost, if you no longer had the position, would people still follow you? Would people still be willing to be led by you if you didn't have the position that you had, right? What would your leadership look like if you no longer had... Um, that position, right? It makes you think a little bit. You know, how yeah. much of my leadership am I? Um, much of my leadership am I banking on the position that I have versus the vision and the mission that I put out? Versus, you know, you know, have I? Are people just serving me because they have to, or have I earned their trust? And I have, have I, you know, gained their you know loyalty and allegiance because of how I've treated them and because of how I took care of them right you look at Jesus people were really got to the point where people were legitimately willing to die for them out to this day people are willing to die for them why because he showed us his loyalty to the fact that he was willing to die for us in the first place right and if you if you follow a leader that's an a tyrannical leader um, you know like let's pick on Hitler again for example do you think Hitler was willing to die for his people no but he was sure was willing to kill for his people. Um, you know, not so good. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, people are not going to follow people. They'll follow people as long as they have the position because if they don't, for example, Hitler, if they didn't, they would have got killed. Um, but then the moment that that leader, I guess one of, the, one, of the, one of the biggest indicators of the style of leader is this. What happens, what, what type of legacy lives on once that leader, person, is no longer either in position or no longer around. And I think legacy speaks of leadership. Legacy speaks, yeah. and, and going back to what I was saying at the beginning of this, of this chat, where, you know, um, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, leadership is reproduction, right? 
And and uh-huh. so going back to, I mean, what is reproduction? Reproduction is legacy. What have you left behind? What kind of stuff have you left behind? Are people still willing to follow and still willing to die for the cause even as the person is not around? And I think a big, going back to, and I think this is going to happen a lot, but we're just going to keep going back to the definition of, of, of leadership. Uh-huh. Um, you know, a big thing of... Um, a big thing about leadership is, um, you know, that effective leadership lives on even when that leader is no longer around because it yes. now revolves around something bigger than the person. But now it yeah. revolves around an idea. It revolves around a mission. It revolves around, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, um, that, that literally makes me think of a book that we both read together, uh, Good to Great. Uh, it literally it, it explains that like great leaders, um, when they're gone, they're, the development that they created keeps going because they created a, an, a team and created, leaded people in a way that didn't start and end with them. Yeah. They taught people on how to do it without them. Yeah. Um, and I think being a, a good and hopefully even a, a great leader uh, doesn't get stuck on the focuses as, uh, well, I feel like I'm a servant leader or 60% of a, the time I'm a servant leader, so I'm a servant leader. No, 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 no. Being a good leader means that like in this moment right now am i being a tyrannical leader we'd like to go ask am i being just a typical or passive leader or am, am i really focused on benefiting everybody and maximizing the most for everyone mm-hmm. um rather than just making this about myself or what's easier for for me to control yeah yeah, that is a good point. Because it's very easy for me to be like, ah, oh, man, I'm mostly a servant leader, so I'm serving leaders. It's like, no, no, no. Leaders are people who are being self-aware enough to be able to look at that mirror and develop themselves while developing others. Yeah, here, I just want to squeeze this in. If you have to tell people that you're the leader, then you're probably not a leader. A, a, a true leader doesn't have to tell people he's in charge. People will willfully follow him or her. And you know, if, if you have to forcefully, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, if if you you know if you have to. If you have to manually establish your leadership, then uh, you are sucking as a leader. <laughs> I'll, I'll just straight up say it. Um, you know, because a real leader. See, Jesus didn't. Jesus never, never at any point in time did he say, "Hey, I'm the leader," or "I'm the boss," or "Do what I say." People willfully went to him and said, "What can I do? How can I serve? How can I help?" Whatever. And people, hey, Jesus, teach us. Jesus, teach us to pray. Jesus, teach us what we should do. Okay, Jesus, who's our neighbor? Who should we love? How should we love? People went to him. See, leaders, real leaders, have people go to them. Real leaders don't have to chase after people. Please follow me. Please follow me. Please have, you know, please teach, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh... So if, if anybody has to establish their authority, that's because they didn't have any in the first place. Bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. I think as leaders, hey, Zach, because we have that, hold, that baseline Zach, of like, a, hold, sorry? hold that thought. My batteries are about to die in my remote. Just hold that thought for a second because I'm going to lose you there. So let me just change my battery real quick. Guys, I'll be right back. Okay, are we back on? Let me see here. 
There we go. We are. All right, cool. Leaders also need to know when to break. Leaders need to take care of themselves in order to properly take care of... Ooh, that's a good... Yeah. That's a good point, Nikki. That's right. It's... On that topic, um, that's really a balancing act because there are people who take care of themselves too much and there are people who take care of others too much. Yeah. And you need to be able to assess which one you are and yeah. balance that. Yeah. And, um, the, and the thing about uh, uh, you know, a healthy leader, a healthy leader is not scared of delegation but thrives by delegating to others. Because the more he yeah. delegates and the more he allows other people to step up and to grow, the more loyal these people will be to him or her. And so, you know, so again, healthy leadership, delegation is a sign of healthy leadership. Why? Because you're not scared. You're not scared. You're not trying to, you know, hold on to what you have, but rather, because you, you can never grow what you squeeze. You can never grow what you hold on to. You gotta let it go yeah. for it to fly. You gotta let it grow for it to go. Um, you gotta give it room, right? And and that's a sign of, of leader. So, you know, people that say, I'll just say this and I'll pause for this. People that say that they don't have time to take a break are people that are unhealthy to the point where they don't actually trust the people that follow them where they can be at rest knowing and believing that things are gonna be okay. See, if... If, if your organization depends on you to run well, then your organization is screwed. Because, again, it's all about legacy. It's all about reproduction. And, and if, if, if your organization, and you know, you know who, in, in, in the entire world of leaders, you know who are some of the worst people for this? Pastors. Pastors. The thought that if I miss one Sunday, my church is going to crumble. People are going to leave. Um, and, 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 you know, pastors are some of the worst for this. Listen, if your church depends on you in order for it to grow and in order for it to thrive, then guess what? You're screwed and your church is screwed. Um, uh, but, yeah, it's, 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 listen, you know, leaders that say they don't, you know, that they don't have time to take a break are actually just people that refuse to delegate because they don't actually trust the people that they themselves have raised up. And what does that say about your leadership if you don't trust the people you have raised up, you know? Um, yeah. Let me grab some coffee here. I'm getting tired. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's really good because I think as leaders, um, as much as the standard has not been set properly mm -hmm. um, for the exact reasons that we just touched on, the actual model of being a good, optimal, effective leader yep. is actually having as little control as necessary, but having control over the things that only you can control. That is... Uh, um, like, if you can develop your team to run 90% of the time without you, and you run the 10% that is most important, I do believe that I'm quoting... Uh, Simon Sinek again uh, which is going to happen a lot um, either him or Greg Rochelle but love Greg Rochelle <laughs> um, you are you are effectively leading because what you need to lead you're leading you're doing your part you're not being inactive but you are setting everything up and developing your team on if you're not there for a day, a week, or a month, because you don't know what's going to happen, whatever your mission or your objective is yeah. in your uh, place of work, or your whether it's a side hustle or something you're just really passionate about, it's still going to thrive. If you die tomorrow for whatever reason that might happen, you get hit by a car, you get hit by a bus. Uh, that thing that is really important to you, that mission, that that um, thing that is way beyond just you, will still live on because yeah. you created a team that doesn't need you to thrive. Yeah. Well, it's like I said earlier. Oops, sorry. It's like I said earlier. If if your organization or your company or your charity or your church 
needs you in order for it to run, then, you know, like you said, what happens if you die? If, if, if your company, your vision and your mission dies along with you, then you've done everyone around you, but especially the business you so supposedly loved a massive disservice. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if again, if your organization depends on you to thrive, um, then you suck as a leader, and your organization is screwed. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that gives us a great segue. Um, man, I just want to the Doctor J Star Eighteen. Man, I really appreciate you being a part of this conversation, um, and. Uh, he had a really great point of the Achilles heel of leaders is the pride of power. Leaders must always seek humility in their hearts. Um, good. I that really that. transitions good. well onto like how easily does the power and authority that comes with leadership corrupt us, Phil? <laughs> that's, a, that's a loaded question. Uh, you know, even even I as know. we were talking about this earlier, right? What, who was it? Abraham Lincoln. That said, yeah. uh, power corrupts absolutely. Um, yep. And uh, gosh, that is that is so true. But at the end of the day, it's it's man, I keep dying. Um, you know, at the end, sorry, in the game, not in real life. Um, <laughs> it's not <laughs> Just let it clarify that. Um, you know, but at, at the end of the day, you know, the the content is, and I, I'm 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 gonna. You know, I'm going to have to explain this here in a second, but, you know, the content is solely at the mercy of the container. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and, and what I mean by this, you know, in, in Christian circles, it, it, it's been said like this where, um, you know, charisma will take you there, but character will keep you there. Charisma will get you there, but character will keep you there. And, yes. yeah. and, and at the end of the day, um, you know, anybody can thrive on power for a season, but, you know, get, my gosh, um, sorry, I just died again. Um, but, uh, maybe I should just pause this cause I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think and I'm not watching what I'm doing here. Uh, you know, but, but the reality is this, that, um, you know, a hire, you know, for you to get hired might give you the position. But if you're not careful at growing who you are as a person, the position will crush you eventually. Yeah. Or the position will get to you eventually. I mean, you look at a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of great people that I've followed over the years, pastors, leaders, authors, uh-huh. uh, whatever, that, you know, you know, they're, they're doing these great things or they're achieving these great things. And all of a sudden you hear they've had an affair. And you're like, uh-huh. oh my gosh, this, like, wow, this is whatever this wow, like how could this person ever do this? Then you find out that it's been going on for years and years and years. Like, oh my gosh, how is this done? And and these people yeah. are cracking under pressure. And then, But then there's the other side of it where people, you know, uh, allow the fame or the power or the whatever to actually get into their heads. You know, and we've, we've seen many movies like this where it's like, man, you're not the first person that, you're not the person that you used to be. You know, you used to be so humble and this and that, but then it got to your head. And, and you look at a lot of different artists and, and especially this, this is especially true in in the music world, and not to name names because I don't want to do that, but I think we can easily all think about certain artists that were literally nobodies and and got found out on YouTube or or you know or someone found them and just made them famous and then you know the fame got to them and they just cracked and it's like wow this this person just they just blew a fuse. Who are these people? You know, shaving their heads or getting involved with people that they shouldn't or breaking the law or. You know, getting caught intoxicated, and it's like, what? Well, who are these people? But at yeah. the end of the day, you know, you know, people might get you to places, opportunities might get you to places, um, you know, hard work might get you to places, but character will be the thing that will keep you there. Be the, you know, character is the sustainer of um, of opportunity. C- character is the sustainer of position. Uh, you know, and and correct, uh, and 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 character is the protector of, you know, power, is, is the protector of the person from the power, or, or against the power, right? And character is so vitally important 
but for whatever reason, we just, you know, we don't give it a, 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 we don't give character enough credit, especially in today's world where it's like, get rich quick or, or, you know, yeah. how quickly can I climb the ladder or how quickly can I sleep my way to the top or whatever, right? Um, but it's like, you know, um, character, you know, leadership without character is, 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 you know, iffy leadership without proper morale, uh, proper, um, morals is dangerous. Um, you know, and, and, and leadership with the wrong motives is destructive. Sounded real good. I'm going to replay this later and I'm going to have to, <laughs> um, I'm going to have to quote myself cause that was good. What did I say? Oh shoot. I'm going to have to go back. Um, you know, oh yeah. Leadership without character is iffy leadership with moral is um dangerous and leadership without what's the last thing i said leadership without with the wrong motives is destructive Ooh, that's good someone needs to quote me on instagram or something come on that was good shoot yeah. that was good i i feel good about that one Oof. <laughs> but awesome. i but you know we're a team zach i'll give you i'll give you full uh full credit someone quote zach <laughs> just, just, I'm yeah. good, I'm good. Um, Put it to Zach. Yeah, and the unfortunate reality is throughout history, yeah, no, no, no. Um, Christians and the church uh, have failed at that. And because of their example, people have associated that behavior of being corrupted or being um, um, fake and paired it with God. Um, well, if that pastor did that, then how can I trust God? And we don't realize that as, as Christians, I'm speaking specifically, but even as leaders, we destroy people's hope when we forget how important our character is. Yeah. Um, what you think about, like, even take it away from, from the church. You think about um, presents, like when it found out that he was cheating on his wife. Yeah. Um, you you mm -hmm. lost trust in him mm -hmm. um, as a nation, and you didn't want to back him anymore. Yeah. Um, and and there are so many times where like um, a Christian leader who theology was one hundred percent correct and true turned out was abusing their power. Yeah. And I, Christians didn't know about it because they never questioned um, the leader uh, because everything they did was, was God's work, and that's not, that's not always the case. Um, or they knew about it and hid it because they didn't want people to question God. Yeah. Uh, and that's faulty leadership, That's and that's faulty following as well, but today we're talking about leadership. Yeah. I mean, I just want to throw this in here. No one is ever above accountability. No one yes. is ever above, you know, uh, uh, you know, questioning. Not not questioning, but um, what's a better word for that? No one, no one is above. Yeah, I mean, you. I hope you guys know what I mean there. But you know, no one, no one is is too good to not give people the doubt of questioning them, of, of questioning whatever you know. A good leader will allow people to speak into their lives, and and now you can't just let anybody speak into your life. But you know, we all need someone to you know keep us on track. If we need to. Hey, listen, uh, write this down. Nikki had a real good question here. Um, oh, I didn't say the question. Um, you both are great leaders. What is the most valuable lesson you have learned through a mistake? That is a good question. You know what, Zach? You go first. What Dang. is the most valuable lesson you have ever learned through a mistake? Mm. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, hold on. I'll just throw this. I think one of the greatest lessons I've ever learned through a mistake is that if I, if you can't learn from your mistake, you're screwed. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. you know that mistakes should never be wasted because mistakes are not just wasted time and wasted space and wasted opportunities mistakes 
are great opportunities for you to learn what not to do again. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, in a quick answer, that's not my final answer, but in a quick answer. Um, uh, yes, you can also ask direct questions. Who, uh, Mr. Dr. Star, you can ask questions for sure. Um, but yeah, I would say I would say that that if you you know that if I ever get to the point where I'm not learning from my mistakes and that uh, I'm not learning, I'm not allowing these mistakes to teach me what not to do again, then I'm I need to get a hard check or I need to get checked or whatever. So okay, so what's your actual answer? Hey, you get a move on that? Um, man, the only thing that's in my head right now is. Um, The fact that even when I make a mistake, I'm a mess. God can still use me if I submit to it. But God can still use me. Uh, even in a season where I'm constantly making messing up and I'm constantly trying to develop myself past a mistake I've made, God can still. Um, use me if I'm willing to submit that weakness. That's so good. Um, and and I'm a product of that right now. Um, if I'm being 100 uh, percent vulnerable and, and honest with that, like I just came out of making a pretty big mistake and um, having some really hard conversation with my leaders and. Um, Right now, I'm in a season of where a lot of leaders are giving me um, a platform, and that scares the heck out of me because I I don't want to make any more mistakes and um, miss out on the opportunity that God and my leaders are providing with me. Um, But it g helps me to remember that God is so faithful with our mess ups. Yeah. That He can develop us and use our mess ups yeah. to help other people. Um, yeah. But, and and yeah. Yeah. If I could add to that, Zach, you know, as a leader myself, I'm not, I'm not, I'm never looking for perfection. But what I'm looking for is, is, are you willing to grow, right? Um, you know, I've, I've heard it said this way. I don't know who this, but I've heard it said this way that, you know, sin doesn't disqualify you. Your unwillingness or inability to grow or to work on it is what will disqualify you. Um, mistakes have never been a disqualifier of leaders, but your unwillingness to grow as a leader willingness to learn from your mistakes is what will disqualify you and Zach that's one thing I've always admired from you you know you've done some mistakes you know you'd be the first one to, to admit it I've done some mistakes too but you've done you know you've done some things that um, you know that an average person could easily say I'm out I'm done like this is too much for me I can't come back from this or whatever but one thing I've always admired you know from you Zach that it you know and if, if I can say this you know, the far when you're always willing to take criticism, you're always willing to take correction, and you're always willing to, you know, come back when necessary. Um, and um, you know, and and you're always willing to work on whatever you need to work. Like you've never just been kind of like, now nah, I'm done. Don't talk to me. You know, I've, you know, there's always been a, a very humble, teachable spirit about you, Zach. And that, you can't put money on that. You cannot buy that. Buy that. a thousand times over, but is willing to learn and change and do the work than someone that is perfect. And, uh, you know, but that is never willing, but, that, or not perfect, but someone that is like really good, doesn't mess up that often, but has plateaued as a leader. Um, um, for me, so what was the question uh, here? What is the lesson uh, that you have learned through a mistake? I think one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is um, just because someone wants to be a leader 
doesn't mean I should make them one. Um, and that is something that I have, uh, you know, learned over the years, uh, being maybe too quick in putting people in leadership and not actually spending enough time growing them as a person, um, and not actually, you know, spending enough time maybe, you know, uh, pouring into them and helping them out, um, you know, and then come in and for it to come back later and to bite me in the butt. Um, and, uh, you know, cause especially as a leader, and I'm, I'm obviously, I don't have much experience in the corporate world, though I'm sure some of it might apply, but I'm going to speak from the, um, 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 from a nonprofit organization leadership structure from experience is that, and, and especially more specifically in the church, um, I would say one of the hardest balances as a pastor and as a youth pastor, as a student's ministry pastor, to be more specific even, is, um, you know, it's learning to be okay with a small team but having all the right people on the team than to have a big theme, big team but having the wrong people on the team or the wrong people in the wrong positions. Um, and, and I think sometimes people will be like, oh, well, big team is better, you know, because they need more influence and more people helping and this and that. But at the end of the day, you know, people, you know, a lot of people in the wrong positions or a lot of wrong or even one wrong person on the team is way more destructive than not enough people in the team um, but still having the right people on the team. I don't know if I'm explaining that properly, but um, and I think sometimes for the sheer for the sheer um, sole purpose of I want to make sure that I have enough people on the team, I'd rush to you know to put people on without actually, double triple checking on their character or on their beliefs or even in 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 you know just their morals and and just you know their their self disciplines or even their their actual stand uh stance with with and their actual standing in their faith uh, with God where do they stand um and only to find out later that shoot that was the right person and there's nothing more awkward than to have that conversation with someone that, hey, maybe you should step down because you're not the person I thought you were. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, as a leader, I got to be willing to swallow the bullet. Why? Because at the end of the day, it's not their fault. I'm the one that put them there. It's fully my fault. Um, so I think to answer your question, that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned, I think, from my mistakes is putting people um, too quickly um in leadership for the sheer that I needed someone and just because you need someone it's better to not have somebody in a position and to be patient and to wait you know the lack of someone being in a position is a lot less destructive than having the wrong nation so that awesome um, I'm gonna pull on the dr. J star 18 again yep um, he asked a pretty good question of in a church setting, and I'm going to take the the leeway of expanding it to to be even more than um, just a church setting. But in a leadership setting, what would you say is the appropriate way to have accountability while also being gracious? So balancing accountability with grace. Okay, um, so. Uh, Dr. Star 18, if you could clarify, do you mean by you being a, like keeping other people accountable? Like what is a appropriate way for you to be like for you to challenge someone to grow in their faith and, and, and being on top of someone, so to speak, while um, while still being gracious? Is that is that uh, I'll give you a few seconds because I know there's a there's a little bit of a delay there between the live and uh and the actual stream um 
but if you could clarify, that would be great. I, th I think that that's what you mean. Um, you know, uh -huh. that you're keeping people accountable, um, but without just simply looking like you're just a dictator, so to speak, or a controlling person. Hey, keep your life in order and, you know, whatever. So I'm assuming that's what you mean. Um, I'm not seeing them right in this. Um, I mean, I can go ahead actually and answer that question with that in mind. And then if it's something healthy, sorry, healthy relationship. If you don't have a healthy relationship with that person, you'll never have a healthy accountability with that person. Um, because he's even did with them and he legitimately had a relationship with them. They weren't just, you know, employees or paid people. They were his friends, right? And, and, and you know, Jesus even said, you know, I call you friends, right? I'm, I'm not leaving this just to, uh, you know, just to whoever and just to whatever. But, uh, you know, like the pastor that cheats on his wife. That's the scenario I was thinking of. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, okay, so yeah, so, okay, so let me, let me, I let me. I think with that. Yeah, go um, ahead. So, there's so many other issues that come up way before the pastor's actually already cheated on his wife. Oh, it now never just happens. Where, um, you've the, that the pastor doesn't bounce his eyes when he's looking at, um, men or women um and uh or uh, people are uncomfortable when he's around them like there's little signals that people miss and there's a specific way to not a specific but there there are ways to bring that up without being disrespectful of that person the position that god's put them in yeah um, because they could have an issue that they're working on, yeah. um, and that doesn't discredit them, but obviously there's more things to be worked on. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, if you're someone in the congregation or even just a guest of that church, then maybe that's something to pray about and, um, uh, just check with somebody you know, yeah. um, who might have better relationship with that person um if you're a close friend to that pastor um and you have that relationship already there because you just like regardless pastor cheating on his wife or if it's someone who's under you um accountability needs to be decided by both people yeah. accountability is not something you just thrust onto somebody um because Either way, you're going to get pushback, um, and you're not going to get actual healing. Um, and that's what the goal isn't um, for uh, people to change necessarily. It's for healing to grow so that um, the bad behavior doesn't manifest. Um, and that can only be done when there's a healthy relationship. Uh, and people have been given into people's lives. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Bottom line is this. Every single person ought to be accountable to somebody. And yes. every single person should be keeping other people accountable. And if you don't have an accountability partner, and, and I'm not talking about accountability partner, like, hey, I look at porn, please be accountable to me. Or please, you know, whatever. It's so much more than that. It's, it's about life. We all need someone to talk to and... And, you know, we should all be talking to someone too. Now, going back to this situation, for example, about a pastor that, you know, ends up cheating on his wife, ends up having an affair, whatever. I think, I think that anybody should have the, anybody should have the right to just literally walk up to, to your pastor. Any, anybody at a church, I think, should have the opportunity and the right to go up to a pastor and say, hey, you know, who's your accountability partner? You know, are you being accountable to somebody? Is there someone that you have in your life that you're able to talk about your dirty little secrets or about whatever you're struggling with or about your, you know, whatever? Like, who's accountable? Like, who who keeps you accountable? And if they don't have an answer, I mean, that should be a red flag right there. Any healthy okay. leader needs to, I mean, every leader, every person that wants to be a healthy leader needs to have an accountability partner now 
the, 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 you know, flip side of this is, you know, it's easy to have an accountability partner and to still screw up and to still fail and whatever because the thing is, it's not just because I think over the years, here, here's the issue. Here's where the issue stems from. We've misdefined what accountability is. Like accountability is, you know, if Zach is my accountability partner, we've defined accountability as, hey, Zach, just so you know, I just screwed up. I just wanted to allow it. Please pray for me. Thank you. That's not accountability. Accountability is, hey, I'm thinking of doing something stupid right now. I need you to just, I, you know, before the thing happens, right? But accountability is also literally giving Zach, if, if Zach was my accountability partner, which he's not, but which if Zach was, to give Zach literally full reign and full opportunity to give me, to call me out, but also to call me at any time, to text me at any time, hey, what are you doing right now? What, you know, what, you know, where's your thought life right now? How's your devotional life? How's your marriage? How are your kids? How's your parenting? You know, when was the last time you took a vacation? When was the last time you took a rest or took a break like Nikki was talking about earlier in the chat, right? A real accountability partner is, is when someone gives someone else that they trust and someone else of, of character and that would have their, you know, their right, you know, uh, uh, their best interest in mind is, is what I was looking for. Um, full right to call them out on anything, about anything, at any given time, on any day, and any hour. That is legitimate, healthy accountability. Because accountability, real tr healthy accountability, is not just connecting with people on the things that you want to talk about. It's not just about connecting with people on your own terms when it's convenient for you. Full accountability is giving someone else that you trust and that you love and that you know loves you um, full reign and full access to you at any given time in any given space regarding any given subject. That is true, legitimate, healthy accountability. Okay. Um, so what do you think the point where the... <clears throat> so what do you think is the point where that position should be taken from them? Um, I mean, bottom line is this. if Because there's got to be consequences. There's, there's got to come a point where grace, and I guess to fulfill your question there, you know, with, with uh, but also be gracious. I mean, um, let, let me say this. Just because God forgives does not mean that consequences vanish mm -hmm. and I think yeah. sometimes we're like well if God forgave me why am I still paying the consequences let's say you went around and had premarital sex and 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 got pregnant um guess what if you ask for forgiveness God will forgive you but mm -hmm. you're still pregnant <laughs> and that doesn't change you still got to yeah. pay the consequences of your action and and it, unfortunately for you know better for a lack of, 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 you know, better example, you know, being pregnant is not, is not uh, a consequence. But I'm just saying, like, if you weren't trying to get pregnant, well, guess what? To a point, that is a, a consequences of that action. And by the way, consequence is not necessarily always a bad thing. Consequence is the result of something else, right? The, yeah. You know, yeah. The, 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 the consequence of, of being jacked is that I have a hard time finding pants and shirt that fit me properly right like consequence is not always a bad a bad thing even though 80 percent, 90 percent of the time the word consequence is used in, in a bad thing hey you're going to pay the consequence or whatever right consequence yeah, yeah. is nothing but the result of something else of of an action or, or whatever so the, the the reality is this that um you know just because god forgives and he does does not mean that consequences just vanish and go away so with that said um you know depending on what it is the person needs to be willing to allow someone else to take the position away from them. And that's why churches will have boards and all these things, whatever, so that people, yeah. you know, that it's not just one person. And that's where, you know, dictatorships come and tyrannical leadership comes from. Where it's just one person making all the decisions and no one else has is, is able or, 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 or allowed to have a say in anything in that leader's life. And that leader's above, repro above reproach. Um, that is very dangerous. Um, now, um, 
you know, so um, with that said, I lost my train of thought. Oh, good golly, it's so late. Um, what time is it? Oh, it's 11.24. Oh, we still got time. But anyways, um, you know, but I think that that person needs to be willing to say, okay, to acknowledge, but also to be willing to say, or see, think one of the reasons why we find over the news that there's these pastors are these big um, leaders that just kind of quote unquote go off the edge or you know jump you know go off the cliff so to speak is because you know because no one just cheats on their wives no one just becomes a heroin addict there's always signs there's always a progression there's always a process that happens and if you're not willing to deal with the early signs of the process then guess what Are you the you're you're heading for a, you know for a big bad destruction you're heading for a big bad you know, tumble for a big bad tumble um, so you got to be willing to deal you know don't wait till your house is fully infested with cockroaches or rats before you start to deal with it start to deal with it at the first sign of a cockroach at the first sign of a rat before they start to multiply or before they start you know what i mean but unfortunately in in, in, in leadership we don't do that we we think you know we we like to keep it under wrap because we're like no no i'll deal with it or you know i don't want people to think bad of me or whatever for whatever reason but then we're just fooling ourselves because it's just a matter of time until you know a little cut if not you know treated properly right away will end with could possibly end up in in a life threatening life altering you know pussing you know diseased injury <laughs> you know um and i think that uh leadership is the same thing it's the exact same thing account of if you, you know if you're not because here's the thing what's the point of being accountable if you're not willing to submit to the accountability accountability then becomes pointless right you got to be willing to submit to it and again accountability is not just going to someone and, and fessing up when you screw up it's about being willing to allow that person to have full reign and full you know access to you again at any time in any place regarding anything um yeah hey, is that person alone they're trying to save me yeah yeah i think that's good um, I'm just thinking about that. Does that does that answer your question? Hold on, he wrote something here. True accountability is authority. Like you said, anybody in congregation should be able to call them out. They have that authority as a church. That's true. Good point. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I I like that. I like that a lot. Um, oh, I, I know what I was going to say. But it's really easy to look at uh, somebody else, yeah. this is life, and be like, oh man, they need accountability. Let me go in there and just tell them everything <laughs> that they're... And, True. and like, a lot of the times, we're not being accountable. First off, we're making assumptions. Yeah. Um, because of what we think is going on. Yeah, but hey, let me add this. Let me add this. You know, going along with what I said and what um, you know the Doctor Star Eighteen said, right? Anybody in the congregation should be able to call them out. But here's the thing: if you're not accountable yourself, and if you're not in a place where you're being accountable yourself, you have no right to go up to that person and ask who they're accountable to, or if they are even accountable. It's something you got to be willing to do yourself. Um. Um. Yeah. So if you're not, if you yourself are not accountable, you got you're no position, or no place to be calling someone else out on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The world in the world is if I put a mirror to myself and say, "Oh man, I hate racism." That's like that's been in, in the that's been talked about a lot over the past couple of years. In the headlines, yeah. Um, and the it's like, Cortana was I shouldn't be thinking like, oh man, I'm not a racist. All these people are racist. I should be like, in what ways am I doing something that 
could be racist? What am I doing that could be misconstrued as racist? Yeah. What am I doing? Because it's not, because best intentions isn't always uh, an okay excuse. No, um, you're right. I yeah. need to take action for my life over the problems I see in the world. And then people might say, oh, I see that you, you don't do this thing. Or when people make these kind of comments, you you behave this way. Why do you do that? I could say, well, because I made a, a conscious decision in my life that when this thing happens, or um, uh, I'm not going to do that, this, that, or the other thing, or I made a conscious decision for myself that I wasn't going to say this phrase because I just I don't like it um, for this reason. Be intelligent with the choice you are making with your life so that when people ask you why is that Stay just you are oh uh, because i i don't think that's what i don't know or one, even one, seven, just i see down. everybody else doing it um sir you are i behave this, this way this is your because i see it as this and because i see it as this i behave like this yeah. and then Stay through down. your example i have a people job will will Cortana's start to start now, sir. looking at themselves like and making is. changes based off of their beliefs. Yeah. You know, going back to what you're saying, I think, again, you know, to give credit where credit's due, I mean, Jesus was a pretty cool guy, and Jesus kind of someone knew what he was talking about. And, you know, <laughs> Jesus was the very one that said this, right? You know, before you can take a little speck of, out of someone's eye or even call out the little speck that might be in someone's eye how about you take the plank out of your own eye first you know we 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 we, we nitpick about these little things in someone else's life but completely ignore the big you know pussing ones that are inside of ours uh, you know our our lives and 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 it's amazing how you know it's amazing how we're wired this way where it's like it's so easy to just, you know, call out someone else for their crap while being completely ignorant about our own crap. And it's like, man, it doesn't work that way, bro. It does not work that way. Yo, Halo 5. Yeah, bro, Halo 5 is lit. This game's fun. By the way, they're coming out with Halo Infinite, bro. I think it's like September or something like that. Uh, Microsoft just announced it at E3 a few weeks ago. Dang. Halo Infinite, it looks like they're banking hard on multiplayer. I think it's going to be another Battle Royale style. But, bro, go look at the video. It is amazing. Because uh, Dr. Project... No, what is it? Sorry, Dr. Star 18 just said, bro, i got to get this game. <laughs> yeah, this game is awesome. Um, and the graphics... Yeah, I'm playing this on my Xbox Series X right now. I'm only playing it on a 1080p TV because that's all I've got. But... Um, the graphics are absolutely phenomenal. Like the the opening cinematics for this game. Sorry guys, this is totally like off topic, but um, but the opening cinematics for this game. I can't I can't skip the cinematic. That's why we're watching it. By the way, um, but the opening cinematics for this is watching like a real life movie. I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is animation. This is digital animation. It's like it's come the gaming company has the, the gaming community, the gaming world has come such a long way. Yeah, no. It's Ooh, I love cool. it. it looks good. I love I'm that. Have to get an Xbox before I yeah. Get the game. I love that quote Which... that uh, Doctor Star 18 just said: "Make your bed before you try to change the world." A wise man uh, to say. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, we want to change the world, but it starts at our own front door. Yeah. You want to change the world? The... It starts with your house. Your own your own self, your own family. Yeah. Like, even the Bible talks about that. I think it's in Mark 8, or maybe it's in Mark 13. It talks about it a few times in the Bible where, like, leaders and deacons within the church, primarily, um, they need to... If they can't... Oh, hello. Siri. <laughs> Siri wants in this conversation, does she? Um, where, if you see a leader... That whose children are, are running 
all over the place and living their life however they want. They can't be a leader anymore. They have to be able to manage their own house first before being able to to lead within the church. Um, and like the point of what, that I bring this up is that even though whether or not you see it actually um, held and expected in the church is another thing, but let alone other companies. Um, yeah. What it is, what do you expect from your followers or the average people? You need to do more as leaders. Because um, whatever your example is, people will always do less than that. Yeah, they say whatever, uh, what's, what's the saying? Whatever, as a leader, whatever you do in, whatever you do in moderation, those under you will always do in excess. So, you know, whatever little, you know, if you if you have a little bit of compromise in your life, then you best accept those, expect those under you to have a lot of compromise. If you allow even a little bit of compromise in your own life, you're in no position to talk to someone else about their compromise in their lives. So, no, I'm playing, uh, yeah, I'm playing Xbox Series X. Uh, a bunch of my friends got uh, pulled in together, and actually including Zach. Uh, pulled in together and, and bought me this for my birthday, uh, which was in May. It was by far, hands down, the best birthday present I've ever received in my life. Um, it's it's uh, actually that's not totally true. This this is one of the best presents I've ever received in my life. One year, my my wife bought me a really amazing bike, which I have a, a pedal bike, not a motorcycle bike. bike bought me a really good bike which i still have to, to this day and it's 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 an amazing quality bike and it was really expensive that's quite up there too obviously i gotta give my wife some credit i can't say that my friends have gotten me better gifts than my wife's because then i'd be sleeping on this couch for the remainder of this year at least but yeah no, 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 no. all right uh, going back to our conversation yeah um Especially talking about like when leaders have messed up. Um, how do you think, Phil? Um, how do you think that we can rebuild trust with those we lead after we've messed up? Um, time is your friend. It's just the bottom line. You know, trust. Trust is one of those things that uh, you know. And take a lifetime to earn, but a second to lose. A lifetime to earn, uh, you know, but a moment to break. Um, it's, it's. I think, you know, consistency. Um, consistency is key. Um, wait, oh, those are those guys are with me. Shoot, I'm just doing friendly fight over here. Um, yeah, again, yeah. Time is your friend. Um, just being consistent. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 gonna take time. That's just the reality. It's not something that uh, will happen overnight. You'll lose it overnight, but you will not regain it overnight. That is for yeah. show. Um, but uh, yeah, just being consistently doing the right things day in and day out, and you know, eventually, you know. But here's the thing too: is that you know, once once you know. Everyone's everyone's gonna experience failure. Everyone's gonna experience screw up. Everyone's gonna experience you know downfalls and shortfalls and shortcomings and whatever in their lives. And and some of the most gracious people towards your faults are gonna be the people that have experienced faults in their life, against the other people will treat you in yours. Yeah, that's really good. Um, but um, yeah, that's but again, yeah, it'll take time. Uh, it's not gonna happen overnight, but you got to be consistent, and you just got to keep plowing through. And uh, you know, you may not, you know, like like again, without naming names, you know, but there are pastors that you know have fallen and cheated on their wives, or you know, fell to adultery. Maybe you know, it's not like, hey, I'm gonna cheat on my wife, but you know, one thing led to another, and and you know, whatever. Um, you know, but the reality is, is is some people might not.
never be able to fully go back to where they were. And um, again, just because God forgives doesn't mean that the consequences gets eradicated. Doesn't mean that the consequences just, you know, vanish and disappear. Um, so, um, yeah. So some people might not ever be able to, you know, go back to um, full time. So, for example, let's just use pastors, for example. Um, yeah. You know, they might not ever go back to um, full time ministry. And I'm, I'm using pastors, for example, because like, you know, you, you mentioned Bill Gates earlier, right? Bill Gates, you know, him and his wife got a divorce and then he found out that, you know, he had a secret girlfriend on the side and this and that, whatever. But, you know, he's not going to lose his job over that. He's not going to lose really influence over that, so to speak, as far as in the world is concerned, because this is normal in the world, right? As far as, 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 you know, moral law is concerned, they don't really have much as far as, as you know, that's concerned. But um, in the church, that's a whole different story. So for some people, depending to the degree, I, th I think I think a big playing, you know, a big a big factor to this, something that plays a huge role in this is, is um, you know, if someone screws up and comes clean about it before they're found out about it, that makes a difference. Um, their willingness to admit and their willingness to actually, um, you know, uh, come clean with it once they're found out, that makes that plays a role on it. Um, you know, do they actually feel bad and recognize the wrong that they've done? Or do they simply, or have they simply come clean because they got found out and uh -huh. it sucks because, you know, well, I got found out, so I might as well, you know, they're only, they only feel bad because they got discovered, not because of the actual action that led them there in the first place. Yeah, so, I mean, just, yeah, they have so, to, not yeah, so there's the right a lot, there's definitely a lot of different factors that are at play here. Um, and, uh, so yeah, how you handle it, how you know how you personally recover from your failure will have a huge say on how people will actually view you after your failure and during your comeback. Um, so if you're like, well, this sucks, whatever, who cares? You know, pe other people have done worse, or like you're kind of downplaying it, or you're only feeling bad because you got caught not because of the actual action in the first place people can all read people can read into that people can see that um so that will make a huge uh um that will play a lot onto whether or not people will trust you again uh yeah yeah i think um Now, depending, like you said, Phil, um, depending on whether this is something where you owned up to it um, and people found out because you let them in on uh, whatever your your mistake was or whether or not you were caught, mm -hmm. it's going to look differently. Oh, of but course. I think leading with, um, after at the very least, a time of reflection. Yeah. Um, or even a season of reflection. Yeah. Um, now let me let me say this. I know I know people and and without naming names, I know people and and you might not know this, but you know someone, Zach, without maybe no know, not knowing, but you've met someone that yes um, has had an affair, an extramarital affair, and was willing to work through it and was willing to, you know pay the consequences and do the necessary disciplinary actions for I think it was about seven or eight years and due to their willingness and you know their broken heart and their willingness to admit what they've done whatever um, you know they were actually fully reinstated into the ministry and, and, and basically got their job back um, but that was because of how they were you know how they behaved through the, like you said, the, 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 what did you say, the rest, not the rest process, but the, you said the word. Time, the season or uh, moment of reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so how they've dealt with that or how they, they've, they've processed everything um, made a huge difference. Now, I know other people that have maybe even fallen uh, in other ways that are maybe not as grave or as, uh, I don't want to say serious, but as, as severe as an affair. And they're still not back in ministry uh, because of how badly and poorly they handled the disciplinary. Oh, that was cool. I just did like an execution. I have no idea how I did that, but that was cool. Uh, but because of how poorly they went through the, um, you know, uh, uh, correction, process. correction process, they're still not in ministry. Or even if they are through it in a back door or start another ministry, um, which um, because towards how people are treating you through their through your mistakes um, and how you're handling everything and whatever, it will make a huge impact on whether or not people are going to trust you again, whether or not you're going to be reinstated again. Um, so, yeah. 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 Um, I th yeah, I think if we're talking about... Um, Just rebuilding trust alone. Um, there needs to be that time of reverse there. Yeah. Um, and at that point, it's it, it's obviously all in God's hands, um, especially as Christians. But um, God uses um, your peers and the people who used to follow you yeah. to make those decisions. Yeah. Um, and you can be as sorry as as, as you can, um, but that doesn't mean you're getting it back. Yeah. Um, See, here's, here's the thing, and to add to that, Zach, here's the thing. The people need to know and need to see that you're more concerned about being reinstated in your spiritual and physical health and mental health. You're more interested in that than you are in being reinstated in your mission. And if people can see and catch on that you're more interested in being reinstated in your position than they are about you being made healthy again, then people are not gonna trust you. And even if you do get back to the position, it's never going to be the same, and you've you've lost a lot of credibility with your followers. Because the goal yeah. should always be health, not position. The goal yes. should always be, That's great. you know, um, moving forward in life and growing and growth and self-discipline and mm -hmm. you know, even in leaders, not just for the average believer, but for every leader. Dang it! I keep dying, man. Oh, I just got incinerated. There's no coming back from that one. Normally, I'm allowed to get back up be picked up but Hello? nope not this time can anyone hear me? dang this game just got serious i think i'm at a boss by the way once i'm done this boss i'm, I'm going to bed okay i'm, I'm on enough. vacation starting in 11 minutes so god bless awesome. vacation time um well i'm pretty sure let me just go over i think we hit all the the, the points on are yeah. and by the way guys thank you so much for for uh, asking us some questions that always helps and sometimes you know we come up with things that we want to talk about but it's awesome that you you know that you guys chime in because then it's like hey yes. let's actually talk about what you guys actually want to know about um so thank you so much for that really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah we don't want this to be about two dudes talking we, we have experience and um opinions for sure but um it shouldn't just be we don't want it to just be us um we would we love it when you guys are part absolutely um yeah i think we we touched on everything um cool. that's awesome hey by the way uh dr star 18 i have no idea who you are but you're cool and uh yeah. I like you, and thanks for being part of this, man. Appreciate are, it. Like yeah. Nikki, I know who you are, and you're awesome. So thank you for just being you. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, 
And then we had Nat. But, uh, we didn't have that much... We had good conversation, but we didn't have that many people talking. Um, but uh, this was really good. This was really good. Oh, man, I died again. Bro, this... I'm, like, getting frustrated here. See, that's good leadership. Thank you, Mr. Buck. That's good leadership. He's willing to lay his own whatever aside. Man, I'm out of ammo. Um, and, and come and help a fellow person up. And, that's uh, teamwork. Teamwork, Robbie. Teamwork. Yeah. Ooh, I'm gonna get this gun. What is it? What? Oh, I thought I died. Oh, wait. Why are you following me? Get out of here. Ooh, this makes a big bang. Yeah, you're dead. Uh, oh, yes! Sorry, I'm getting excited. I'm like killing everybody no. right now. It's good. While you're finishing up there, do you want me to start on the closing? Sure, Stop. unless uh, tonight was another awesome night. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, make sure to follow me on Instagram and make sure to, so that, because uh, I announce when I, I I do my next lives and stuff and my next streams, and then um, I'm going to also put uh, a link for the U my YouTube channel on here, and I'll put it on my Instagram as well, because the, these videos only stay on here for 14 days, I believe it is. So... Um, I'm gonna put the link to my YouTube channel because I'm after this I kind of edit the video a little bit cut out you know some of the crap and then um, and then I you know fix the audio and whatever and then I post it on there and it's 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 on there forever and you guys can share it and you know with anybody that needs to hear this and stuff like that so um, his IG is cringy but it's worth it thanks Nikki I love you too um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not the best. I'm not the most creative or the most whatever. You're not gonna find anything like cool or overly like inspirational, um, as far as like you know creativity is concerned. Um, but uh, you know, you'll find some some good helpful things. If if nothing else, you'll find some some decent memes to laugh at. Um, cause I'm pretty good at that. So, I mean, I don't make them. I just find them and then share them. But, um, emergency exit. Yay! What does that mean? Where am I? Climb to the top. Oh, dang. Where am I? What? Where am I supposed to go? Top. What is this? Far Cry 5? Climb to the top of the tower. Yeah, you go ahead. Okay, hold on. Got some godly wisdom here from Pastor Phil, and I know uh, that game franchise I'm buying next. All in one night. Uh, by the way, you can actually buy the Master Chief collection, which has Halo 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you can buy like the add-ons like ODST and stuff like that for like three bucks, two bucks. Um, they are awesome. I own the whole thing. And I also own... Actually, when I got Xbox One, um, the Halo Master Chief collection, Halo 5, and uh, Gears of War all came with the Xbox. So that was pretty cool. So that's how I got these games. But anyways... Um, yeah, Zach, go ahead and uh, close us up, baby. Yeah. Um, so, guys, just, again, thank you for being here. Um, remember to uh, share and with w with a friend that you think this would, uh, that would either enjoy the video or... Um, I'm just reading the chat. Uh, yeah, because... No matter um, who you are, where you're at in life, or what you believe, uh, it's important to us that, that you know that God loves you, that we love you, and we appreciate you choosing to be a part of this uh, play and chat on leadership. Um, so if you, you join us every time we do this, if you want to download um, Phil's Instagram to get the heads up, or if you just want to come in every now and again, um, we would we would love that. Uh, we'd also love to hear from you on what you'd love for us to, to talk on. Um, what topics are, are ones that you are passionate about? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, a more Christian perspective, whether that's from a pastor's perspective or someone who's been in the church for um, a few years. Um, yeah, please seek us out. Um, we're just... We're passionate about this, and we're passionate about about you and having conversations that aren't full or um, 
biased or bigoted. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're really trying to to be having these conversations so that people can grow. Um, because a lot of times it just turns into I see it this way, another person sees it this way, and we're just going to tear uh, people's character down. And that's that's not how you get change. That's just how you increase bitterness. Um, and, and, and the whole heart of these leadership. conversations too is to have the con you know some hard legitimate like deep serious conversation meaningful conversations that we just don't feel like a lot of people are having right talking about for example last week we talked about um you know authentic friendships and i think that that's some things that we all want that we all desire but that we don't really feel that people are having any conversations about what is a good friend it means to be a good friend um right it's, it's you know and these are things you know and, and and like the people that you allow to speak into your lives matter so why aren't we talking about this right what a, what is a good leader how can i be a good leader what is good leadership you know why are these why are things like this things that we're not really talking about and that was really the heart behind this is just us having a conversation about things that actually matter that we don't feel like people talk enough about and that's why we do this awesome um we hit the cutscene we did it yeah alright I'm done awesome uh should we close and pair that absolutely go for it buddy I'll let you pray this week hold on let me let me uh get let me wait till this cutscene's done <laughs> I don't want you to be praying while uh, someone's getting murked or whatever. But what is this Iron Man? What the heck? Man, I can't wait. Uh, seriously, I can't wait for Halo Infinite. Gosh, I can't wait for Halo Infinite. <coughs> I can't wait for Far Cry 6. I can't wait for Forza Horizon 5. Oh my gosh. Forza Horizon 5 is going to be next level for sure. Oh, there you go. I was able to skip it. Nice. nice. Um, okay. um, oh, no, there's another one. <laughs> Dang it. Can I pause? Oh, I can pause. Okay, hold on. There's um, some people saying stuff here. Um, one of the things that we can add to our, uh, our possible brainstorming document Nikki was talking about um, talking about uh, dating uh, and sex. Ooh, I would love to. I have a lot of stuff to say about sex and about dating. Honestly, both of them could be their own. Oh yeah. Uh, conversation. Oh yeah. To I've... be completely honest. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's great. Uh, I will actually add that as, once we're done this video. Um. But yeah, again, thank you guys. Uh, we're just going to close in prayer now. Yeah, go for um, it, baby. So, Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this plan chat today. We thank you that you, you are a God that um, creates fun, but you're a God who creates um, great conversation as well. Mm -hmm. God, help us to be leaders. Help us to take what we have heard today um, and adapt it to our own lives. Not think about uh, how others should adapt it, but take on um, the aspects that will help us benefit and express your love to the world. Yes, Lord. Um, God, be with us tonight. Help us to get great sleeps. Um, give us new ideas. Help us to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. Yes. Lord. In your name, amen. 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 Well, God bless you guys. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you. Uh, if you don't already follow me, make sure to follow me uh, on here so that you can get the uh, updated schedule as to when I'm online and you can get the notifications when I come online to play and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is cool. Thanks, Zach. Thanks for being here, man. Really appreciate it. Love you so much. And, uh, Love you too. Thank you. I hope you have me. a amazing night, guys. God bless you. Peace out. Merry Christmas. And see you next time.